this call it is. Yeah. All righty. Beautiful, beautiful. So here we are. Um, <laughs> I mean, we wanted to do this live like what <laughs> since months now, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But there's been wait. so much happening that every time I was like, "No, Stephen Alter, I want to, uh, I want to connect to you privately." <laughs> <laughs> totally. And, you totally. Know, and I need this time together to actually figure stuff out. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We all need that. That is that is truly sometimes I feel my wife's always saying to me, you know, you're better off in a monastery or a desert or a cave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I really get I get that feeling of, you know, the, there's times when we're feeling like we want to be in relationship and times when we want to feel like we we'd like a little retreat for ourselves. So yeah. I, I I recognize the the cosmic dance in that. That is a very you know, very pure part of relating and being in partnership. So this is a pretty rich and beautiful subject, Pyra. So yes. Uh, how, yes. Should, um, how should we start? It's, it's fantastic. Well, you know, um, first of all, like for everyone that is interested, we have started these conversations about source being a source bliss carrier. Um, a few months ago, I guess, you know, in, in, in you know, linear time, uh, on my YouTube channel, you can find them there. We wanted to start lives there, but somehow the the, the bots of you know YouTube and all this, uh, we didn't really get through. So now we're just recording it and going live on Facebook, and then I'm going to uh, download it onto my YouTube channel. So this is an ongoing conversation about what is, are we source bliss carriers? And if we are, what does it mean? So this, these are the first ones we did. And now we want to specify every time on a topic. So since uh, the topic of relationships has been coming up, not only for me, but for many people around me, it seems there is like a, you could say a shift in the feminine masculine balance, like in the human collective, which is hijacked, you could say, uh, through the powers that were in the sense of making so much division like you you know like when i look at my daughter like she's 14 and she needs to or even her friends of nine years old they need to define their sexuality or their gender because else there is peer pressure if you don't so when you look at the new generations it's like there's something going on on this kind of like uh the vision you could call it they they say it's the vision or unification i'm different or you need to define somehow your you know where you belong to but when you look at it from a, a larger perspective from the awakening pers perspective or um, the oneness perspective you are like wow it's hijacked i mean when you look at it it's it's hijacked in the sense of yes we're all different and that's the beauty you know, and that's where uni unification or union comes from. It's really beautiful um, because we're all different. That's what brings our strength. Um, but when you look at it now, when I look at it in my own relationships, for example, with my husband, we're together more than 20 years, I think now, married 16 years. When I see the issues that are coming up for me and mostly, <laughs> not him. <laughs> You know, he's stable, he's a Zen monk, he's a Zen master, he's a free diver. He's, you know, for me, when I look at the issues for me coming up in, in that balance of the feminine masculine, then I'm like, wow, I don't know how everybody's gonna navigate this, but this is intense. This is something that's coming up in the collective and this is intense. So that's why, you know, we decided to speak about this <laughs> topic of relationships. Um, and see where where this is going to go from the perspective of we are source bliss carriers how do we bring it into our not only all of our relationships but also our intimate relationships i don't know many people that are in a 20 year long relationships that don't have to cross through a lot of barriers and a lot of work together to just kind of still stick together because of the sorry i just i'm, I'm almost done but there's so much going <laughs> no, oh on <laughs> going don't stop okay <laughs> It's precious. It's a jewel. <laughs> get it out there. <laughs> exactly. I need to get this out. So yeah. it's like <laughs> because because a lot of this it. stuff, yeah. <laughs> because a 
lot of this stuff, like this summer, I've been working with so many women, also some courageous men actually that have, uh, that have uh, joined my workshops that were about the sacred feminine and about the split. There seems to be a split in what used to be called the dark feminine and the light feminine. And you see this everywhere. I don't know if you're seeing it, but you see this everywhere in the new age communities and all the leaders, the pioneers, everybody is like going on about this dark feminine, light feminine. And people don't really know. Like, again, they get hijacked in the dark feminine because they're like, uh, you know, a lot of women are like, yeah, the dark feminine, they change into this Kali, you know, it's like, that's fine. You can change into Kali. I, I've been working with her like more than 25 years. I know what the energies are. But if you go into Kali without the heart, without that unification of that split of the light goddess also needs to be there. You can't be hijacked into the dark goddess and be like, this is the feminine right now. We need to tap into our shadow sides. Okay. But so there seems to be, and you know, I could seriously be talking to you about this, about this split in the dark and light feminine for years like i have so much that i need to get into the collective <laughs> about it that we won't get into it but <laughs> 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 we no, need to feel this stop. and i know exactly he, where it is <laughs> I, want Kali, I need kali out there and equally you need you know Kuan Yin out there we want to have the the dark feminine and the light feminine keep going yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's exactly it it's like when you look at the the the, the white family, it's like Mary, you know, the mother of Jesus, like all this, okay, you know, it has been put on a pedestal that women have to be like that, peaceful and motherly and all this and loyal and, you know, and we are, but the, the other side, like the tantric and the orgasmic and the, and the ecstatic and the, you know, this, then the, the openly sexual and the wild woman, the Shakti, you know, like the, somehow these two have been completely split and it is, in a lot of women now, we're trying to combine it, like all these goddesses workshops and everything is all about that. It's trying to combine these two sides as one. And it's not easy because 5,000, if not more than thousands of years, they have been split because I don't know why exactly, but I think that was kind of scared of the feminine power because before she was called Mater Magna, the, the the magnifying or the, the the magnetizing that's it the magnetizing mother meaning she has all these motherly qualities and loyal and all this you know and beautiful and blah, 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 but she also has these qualities of magnifying of you know tantric uh abilities so it's like th this was before we were one but then uh, cultures like uh, the Babylon culture, the Egyptian culture, the Roman Empire, all of them 5,000 years ago, they started to split and the, and the feminine was disrespected, raped, killed, you know, all these things for thousands of years. And now we are the first generations that are trying to bring it back. So all these cultures were, uh, you know, identifying with the shadow aspects instead of with the healing aspects. So and the shadow aspects, aspects of the, you know, of the, let's say the red, magic so it's red magic and white magic so the red magic is like the the you know manipulation control uh you know self-sacrifice all these things and 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 you know the shadow aspects of the feminine of the light feminine are this what i just said like self-sacrifice and self-sabotage and all these things so when you look at it i have a whole list man i have a whole list like of qualities you know and shadows of both of them and I'm like looking at them almost daily and I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is this. So yeah. How do Magic. we, in masculine and feminine, that's why we're having this conversation, masculine and feminine, I guess you are the he, you know, and I'm the she in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting to I, see that in all of us. Exactly, exactly. Well, well, actually, I, I will speak for a minute just, just to that, because I've been contemplating exactly the same question. It, it, if you're listening to this, which and you and you're sitting down and you want to kind of inqu inquire into the dark feminine and the light feminine for yourself, because I think Hira has brought up <laughs> her and I when we start this, we always say, Oh, let's talk about this. And then when we start, we talk about something entirely different. <laughs> usually, and I just love that. I love the spontaneity and the flow of it. It's it's just gorgeous. So um, so if you think about so let's just consider that for a moment. If we go to the dark feminine first, because I'm like you, Hara, I mean, I love both aspects of it. 
So as you're listening, because this is a dialogue, right? And a discussion that you're having with Hire and I, it's not, not just us, you're, you're participating in this. And if you're considering the, you know, the, the wild part of yourself, the, the shadow, let's talk about the dark feminine and the gifts and the shadows. So just consider for a moment, if you ask yourself, so if you go to that dark feminine in you, whether you're a male or a female, you can go down into your gut, into your womb, into that power in energy center down there. And ask yourself, which gifts do you do you embody? So of the dark feminine, which gifts do you embody and need to embrace? And, and equally, which aspects of the shadow do you need to hold and embrace and heal, heal, right? It's the same thing. Quite often we tend to push away our shadow and really grab onto the part, oh, this part of me is really good, or I need to embrace this part because it's such a good skill to have. But in fact, we need to embrace both. So if you consider the gifts that the dark feminine, you know, and I'm talking about the wildness of the dark feminine. So quite often the gifts of the dark feminine might include things like, you know, your wildness, your sensuality, your erotic energy, your freedom, the pleasure, you know, that whole, the whole area of beauty, the fearlessness, you know, sacredness, magnetism, passion, ecstasy, any of that, any of that, that's, that's all that as, um, I was saying, you know, the orgasmic living part of life, that, that's the gifts of the dark feminine. And the shadows are often exactly like Hari said, you know, they're things like vanity and manipulation and seduction, jealousy, all of that kind of side of, side of life, the envy, the superiority, the judgment, all of that, the kind of obsession, the need for validation, all of that kind of thing. You, you so just consider both of those. If you took sort of the wildness of the dark feminine, you took the vanity of the being the shadow of the dark feminine, you know, but both of those need to be embraced. It's not that you're pushing one away and saying, this is not me. I don't want to have anything to do with it. You're actually looking to heal and embrace and, and really um, rest, rest in this kind of em embrace of both of them. So I'm just, you know, curious as, as you, you, as you explore with us, which which of those? What are the gifts for you for the dark feminine? And what are the shadows? And I'm, I'm going to pass. I, I'm just bringing those up as a few examples because they're, they're going to pay, pass back to her because she literally does have books and books and lists and lists and <laughs> years and years of experience in the in the dark feminine. So I'm just wondering if you want to add to that because I think that's you know this is real practical stuff for people. And sometimes they think either like you said either they're embracing the light feminine they don't want to embrace the dark feminine or they perceive the dark feminine as just the shadow and they don't look at the gifts or they or vice versa they see the gifts and they haven't really embraced the shadow at all yeah so that's exactly what i mean if i look at i mean i'm 48 yeah so i was born in the 70s 74 um, and when you look at it, for example, I've been reading this book, it's called The Queen's Code, where uh, it is described in a really nice way how um, I was born in a time where men were really literally seen as our enemy, which is, you know, when you look at it, you're like, why? But okay, you know, this one of those hijacked, hijacked, it, Let's start with saying that our human collective has been hijacked for, you know, since we can imagine, like thousands of years in the sense of, uh, we wanted to play that game. So there's no, you know, a victim or, you know, aggressor. We wanted to play that game and now since 10 years it's over and we are, we are moving into a new earth where, you know, we are both like trying to create these new realities. And what I found is that uh, women have to create those or have to, we, we have that magical power because we have wombs. So we can actually create these new realities through the womb. And of course, men also have a womb. They have a more energetic type womb, the Hara, but they have that space as well. It's just that for men, and I'm not speaking about you, but I'm speaking about men in general, it's kind of hard for them to kind of like tune into that space but once they know about it it's very easy like that's what i've seen in my classes like the courageous men that are participating for them is like oh okay i have a womb okay you know i'll play with it i'll make magic with it so it's like 
we need to change these realities through through the womb but what happens when we start to tune into the womb it's like oh my god there's thousands of years of suppression there so it's not even just my suppression like oh my father said this and my mother did this it's not it's not only that it's like thousands of years of suppression that and men and women we are all uh, you know going through um the, these hijacks of the sacred feminine. So what do we need to move through? We need to move through rage, you know, and that rage is our Shakti power for men and women. But we need to, first, when we start tapping into it, what, what comes out? I mean, look at the world now, like there is a lot of rage at the moment. So this is what we're doing, right? If you look at certain countries, you know, where, where women are rebelling against whatever order it is, that's just indicative of what's worldwide. There is just a worldwide feeling that, like you said, that the rage has it tends to be released first. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and th and that's what I've noticed in my in my own. It's like once these magical powers, you could say, started to awaken, this shakti started to awaken. You can call it kundalini you can call it you know we've talked in our first bliss uh, conversations a lot about this what is source bliss and how do you carry it and how can you uh, bring it into the body tumor all these practices but when you just simply look at it you could say that our world is going into some sort of kundalini thing like also like a lot of my friends like they're falling in love and they have relationships where they're falling in love and this and that and finding other partners and no 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 and kundalini they they didn't do any yoga they didn't do any tumo they do, didn't do any of the practices didn't sit in the zen temple for 10 years like me but they're having these experiences but they don't even know what it is they're just like oh my yeah. god this guy i just i'm just in, in you know in his presence and oh my god this you know this and that and i'm like yeah okay you have any experience just calm down <laughs> calm the fuck down <laughs> you know because they, they, they were projecting all this on that other person <laughs> totally and totally that, that, happening it's yeah yes that is so true it's so <laughs> funny it's so funny that you bring that because because yeah you are you are there's a lot of projection right and in, in so many things that happen and and this is why you know going back to what you said about the you know, dark feminine, the white feminine, feminine. There, there is that, you know, if, if you, if you're asking yourself the same sort of questions about, so the rage comes out and there's, there's, a, there's often these swings, like you said, the swings and projections that happen. And we tend to then look at, you know, the, the, we go through phases, a bit like what you were saying at the beginning, um, Hara, that, you know, there's times when we want to, because we're talking also about partnership, there's times when you want to be with your partner and there's times when you just want alone time. And, you know, it's, it's much the same way with the, the feminine, that you have times when you're really in tune with the, the dark feminine, and then there's times when you're in tune with the light feminine or the white feminine, however you want to call it. And, the gifts in sh and there's gifts and shadows of that side as well. I mean, you said it beautifully, you know, Kali and the Virgin Mary. So if we now switch to the, you know, the Virgin Mary side, the, this, the same thing, if, if again, if you're listening and you focus into your light or white feminine, you're going to ask your, your womb or your hara, whether you're a woman or a man listening to it, you know, what, what are the gifts you want to embrace and what are the aspects of the shadows that, shadow that you want to he heal or hold? So if you look at the gifts of, because we're switching now to the light part, the white part of the feminine of the goddess, then th those that's all related to you know, love and tenderness and softness and surrender and kindness as opposed to wildness and the shadows are equally you know afraid to speak out afraid to shine self-sabotaging i mean you've men mentioned all of those so you, you start to really question yourself so you know it, you're listening to this this is your discussion too what what are the what are the gifts you need to embody so do you need to embody more love or more compassion what are the shadows sides of the white the white or the light feminine that you need to also equally embrace are they you know are you afraid to speak out and speak your truth are you afraid to show well what are the what's the kind of difficulties or obstacles that you have you know maybe with body issues maybe with pleasure maybe you're a people pleaser you know those are all shadows of the uh, light or white feminine so they're 
equally, when you start to look at both of those, just as I was saying, from, from your womb. So, it's, so you settle into your heart, you drop into that womb, and you feel into that kind of inquiry, those kinds of questions. Then, then you start to really reveal both the gifts and the shadow of the shadow, shadow side of both the light and the dark. And it's really powerful. It's it's so powerful to actually feel into those as a reality. You've got all of those. And as Hara was saying, if you haven't expressed them, and it's probably going to come out as some kind of anger, rage, irritate, some some kind of rebellion initially, because simply because you suppressed one part and you haven't expressed another. And so that, you know, the white and the dark, the light and the dark, that 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 is really a crucial part of the you know the unfoldment of the divine feminine for this planet and so just as you said we're seeing seeing already all over the planet i mean women generally are striking out at any form of suppression because that there is no doubt that 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 is a suppression that's existed for thousands of years and it's got to stop it has to come to the surface and it has to be expressed so i mean what you're saying is so beautiful it's really 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 deep and there's so much in this again, like what you said. There's so much again in it because uh, that's because I'm a bit all over the place. But th that's what I wanted to get at when I was sp speaking about the Queen's Code. It's like um, because of that generational uh, gap, or you could say, uh, what happened is that women in that in that time, instead of becoming queens, they kind of became kings. That's what she's describing in that book. And it's amazing because I, I started to see these patterns in myself the last months, only the last months. And I'm like, wow, I, you know, I'm so sorry for all the men that I've been, you know, uh, kind of uh, negative towards, um, even when they were offering me support and help. I was kind of negative because I was like, I'm a king, you know. I can, I can deal with this. I'm independent. I can take care of my family. I can provide, you know? And it's like, wait, you know, okay, the queen needs her, you know, queenness or kingdom. We can't call it kingdom, but queendom. She needs that, you know, power, definitely, but not through kind of uh, pushing away uh, the, the, the masculine and being like, oh, this is, you know, this is, has been betraying me and it has been... You know, well, actually, the masculine is also dealing with a wounded feminine and a wounded masculine. Well, we're all dealing with it, but we are projecting it on the masculine, you know, or we're projecting it on the feminine. So there's this, for sure, it's good that the rage is coming out. And especially uh, Western women now, they're so complicated. I mean, there's, you know, and I'm speaking about myself, so I'm not judging. I'm just saying, wow, when I look at myself, I'm like, oh. You know, everybody that needs to deal with my complexity, <laughs> you know, my poor husband, you know, happily he's a Zen monk, you know, happily he's like. <laughs> yeah, no wonder he became a Zen monk, right? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> kind of... <laughs> it's the family in, in joke, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like my wife, she says, no wonder you became, a, you were more, you know, inclined to go to monasteries. She said, you know, exactly. it's, it's so funny. It's absolutely it's so funny. true. You know, and this yeah. is not only like the newest generations. This is going on since, you know, I'm 48. So this is going on for at least two generations already that men are like, woohoo, you know, okay, there's a woman waking up, you know, just, uh, wow, stay close, stay, no, don't stay too close to it because it's going to, it's going to, you know, she's going to fire and it's going to, you know, go to the first man that she sees, which is her husband or a partner or whatever, and bomb, you know. So it's like, Yes, it's very good that the rage is coming out because we need to stand up and we need to change the culture. We need to change all these things. But when you really look at it, we're already changing it since two generations. So, of course, everybody has their own uh, timing, you know, like maybe some countries, women or men are waking up. There is this balance that is changing. There is the Kundalini that's waking up. But maybe in America, it's, uh, I don't know, one generation ago and maybe in, in Thailand or more eastern cultures maybe it's happening now or maybe it was already happening hundreds of years ago you don't know it's like all these you know every culture and every country has their own waking up uh, dynamics so i'm not saying I'm, I'm absolutely not saying it's not good to stand in that rage to get it out but maybe not project it on the ones that you love <laughs> the most and maybe just not project it in any way <laughs> maybe just you know process it in yourself <laughs> Uh, you know, that, that, now that is a really beautiful point to, you know, that what do you do about projection? Because 
the the that that speaks right to the heart of tantra itself you know and ta by tantra of re relationships i'm talking about the union you know honoring the masculine and the feminine honoring both you know how do you work so look, I, I i just share some simple simple things that that i've discovered you know from my own relationship in fact i was talking to my wife and daughter about them just just before we got on and that is you know and about projections when, when we uh, anybody who, who's not familiar with Tantra, let's simply say that it's that you can play with it. It, it is a, a form of union. It's a form of understanding the union between the male and the feminine and uh, between the masculine and the feminine or between uh, the em the bliss and the emptiness. That's it's it, but I'm not going to go any further into that because it's a it's a very rich and, and treasured subject. But I, I, I did want to share because you've mentioned about that, you know the projection and the the relationship between the husband and wife or partner or lover or however you you whatever sort of relationship you are you are in when you look right at the heart of a thing things like tantra you start to realize that we are projecting all the time you actually regardless of whether you realize it when you sit down to your breakfast in the morning you actually start a kind of a projection on in your own mind you 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 first of all think that breakfast has got an independent existence. The fruit's nice or it's not, or the breakfast is nice or it's not. You go shopping and you think, yeah, that's a that's a great that's a great dress. It's you know I, I like those shoes, or I don't like it. You what you're actually looking at all the time is is a projection of your own mind. You're actually simply looking at all your opinions and judgments and ideas put there right in front of you. That there's there's no objective reality other than what you give it give it give to it somebody else is going to come along and look at the same pair of shoes that you just thought were, were terrible and buy them right because because they've got a different projection that's happening in their own mind and in really really simple terms like the clothing one that's actually what we we do with our partners right we we project we're so used we've been with them for let's say i've been with my wife now 15 years you've been with your husband you know many more we kind of we look at them in a certain way. And in fact, it's just a projection of our own mind. We we get even when we get up in the morning, we've got all these things that are going on in our mind say, oh, this is going to be a great day. Or you wake up feeling rotten and say, oh, this is going to be a shocking day. So, so it's actually you're already projecting right from the word go. So you can actually experiment. You can, like I said, uh, I used the word play with with Tantra. So in the very simplest senses. You can actually learn to play with this in, in your own life in really simple ways with your partner. So here's, here's a couple of them. One is you can try feeling or, or seeing or, or experiencing yourself as a Buddha or a Christ, whatever religion you're from, whatever kind of connection you make with spirituality as a goddess, as Kali, as what, what it, you can actually feel yourself with, with that quality, with that, that ultimate quality and that and instead of actually saying that, okay, I'm this or that or the next thing, see, see or feel your body as being completely transparent from the head right down to your feet. So your body's utterly clear and completely empty of any material, of any judgment, of any opinion, of any story. There's no past, there's no future, there's no ideas, there's no concepts. You're just, you're like a balloon filled with air. So there's nothing at all inside, literally nothing, except this pure form so so contemplate so that's one just contemplate that for a few minutes you're actually empty so without all your stories without all that stuff you're actually pure pure and empty inside so contemplate that first and then from this space of emptiness so you might do that for a few minutes even do it when you get up first thing in the morning last thing when you go to bed at night those are really good times because your mind, mind's very fresh and it hasn't got a whole lot of stuff that you, you you know don't look at your phone <laughs> don't read your social media first up and don't do it last thing before you go to bed at night literally get up in the morning empty and feel yourself as being empty and transparent and then when you meet somebody uh so your partner your lover your friend your child your pet whoever um instead of looking at them 
and telling your usual stories. Oh, you know, my partner's away. It doesn't notice me first thing in the morning or, or does. Or, my partner, you know, instead of running the usual stories about who these people are, even when they're near and dear to them, visualize them as being, so whatever you've chosen, if, if you've chosen Jesus, if you've chosen uh, Magdalene, if you've chosen the Buddha, if you've chosen Yeshi Selgiel, if you've chosen any, any, any being to, to, as representing that purity, see them, see your partner as an embodiment of, of that quality, like of love or compassion or wisdom, but just really simply. And doing this just for a moment, like the, it's the first thought, it's the first connection you make. Then there's actually no, it, it, you, in that very moment, you actually can't think anything negative. You can't think a, a, a story about them. You're actually simply seeing them as a, as a goddess or as Kuan Yin or as Yeshi Sogyal or as Magdalene or as Tara. So you don't actually have any negative. You, you just give some blissful energy into that moment. So it's a really powerful way to do, you know, to practice par partnership. And the other thing, the third one I want to get, because remember, you're always in partnership with yourself. You're always in partnership with another. Everything that you see, including the stories you tell about your partner, are your projections. And, and equally, you, you're in partnership all the time with objects, with everything in your space, because you're projecting everything. We know that because of, say, a drink, a favorite drink, right? You go for a particular drink because, in fact, you project a whole bunch of qualities on it. You actually project that that drink you like it because of this, it tastes like this, all, all the rest of it. So we know that even with objects, we're in relationship, we're in a um, sense of union with certain, with everything, right? And so you can experiment with this 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 way. When you, so when you get up and you, you had your shower, you're doing your teeth or whatever it is, that, how, whatever the ritual is you have in the morning, when you wash, instead of, um, you know, we just often wash out of habit. We actually live most of the time in our habitual responses and thoughts and feelings, right? Because what it, whatever Deepak said, like 60,000 thoughts a day and 40,000 we had yesterday, something, something like that. But, but we live in a habitual response to life uh, the majority of the time. So when you go and have a wash or a shower, just imagine that you're washing your divine body, like this actual pure body with blissful energy instead of without any thought washing washing a suffering body with water <laughs> so it's like because that's what we tend to do right we go in and we we may be a bit tired we may be not even conscious at all we're having oh yeah okay oh, thank god i gotta go to work I, I just give myself a quick shower there's almost you're in and, and you're thinking about something you've read on social media or the news in europe or or that you you know you've got to pay the bills afterward whatever it is but how about you just wash instead of washing it with all those mundane thoughts and, and water that you don't even give a second thought to, consider that you're washing it with blissful, because we're the source bliss carriers. I'm coming all the way back to that. We, if you wash with this bliss in the morning and then dress yourself with blissful divine robes, like, like actually that instead of ordinary clothes, you're putting on something really beautiful that you love. It, it, you might even change the way the way that you dress in the morning so if you start your morning like that if you start your day like that your whole day is much easier so anyway those those three simple things you know remember you're the divine being remember your partner's that as well and remember the objects and the things you use are that as well then you start to really live even just for a few moments every day being a sourceless carrier <laughs> So I just, I got to throw, throw it back to you. Like you, just, <laughs> you just hand it down like, uh, <laughs> like centuries and centuries of uh, practices there in, you know, a few minutes. So well done on that. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's, there's many, I have to thank all, I, I didn't really do anything. As you know, you and I, you know, Tenzin Wangyu Rinpoche, Mingyu Rinpoche, Lama Yeshi, the Dalai Lama, all these wonderful great being you know gachin all the all the great lamas that we've learned off over so many years i mean i i can't claim a single word <laughs> <laughs> They're all, I, that's all all due to due to their wonderful teachings i mean i i think that's a wonderful thing you know like like yourself i've been brought up in so many mystical practices so, so i've i've got to thank 
the uh, Christ in Magdalene. I've got to thank Yogananda and Sri Yukteswar. I've got, you've got to thank some of, you know, all these wonderful beings, everybody from Muji to Rupert Spira. And they, I, they're, they're all such wonderful, you know, guides and teachers, Eckhart Tolle, Krishnamurti. They've, they've come to my life and given so many words that I'm sure I have never, ever repeated a word of my own. <laughs> it's always been somebody else's beautiful lineage and blessing that, they pass just like you, you know, when, when we exchange, I'm simply resting in your wisdom. And I think what a wonderful opportunity. Hira's talking suddenly about, you know, divine feminine as, as the dark and the light and the, or the dark and the white. It's, it's so, it's, it's so rich. It's like, oh, what a, what an extraordinary sharing of wisdom that you give me right then. So, so thank you. Uh, yeah, I love it. It's, it's funny because I'm uh, at the moment in a, a dream uh, yoga workshop with uh, Tencent, Wangil and Pushe. So I'm really happy because uh, it's been going on now for two weeks. So we're in the heart. You know, I just want to share that also for people that uh, maybe had never heard about dream yoga or sleep yoga. And we're at the heart at the moment. So we're visualizing the black hole in the heart, oh, yeah. the, right? And in the night, uh, you need to sleep a little bit more upwards, you know? So you're not completely comfortable on your side, but you're like a little bit upwards. And I've had dreams and dreams since three nights. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, I'm so loving it. So if, you know, if people are interested in that, what, what really, what I love about that practice is that you constantly say, this is a dream. So what you're doing with the bliss, you can also, because sometimes we're not in bliss. So you, you're like, okay, yeah. infuse your objects with bliss. And people are like, oh, I'm not in bliss right now. So I don't know how to infuse yeah, exactly. my, or myself or the objects in bliss, because I don't know how to access it. <laughs> <laughs> so in that sense, if you're, you know, if you can't, which I also, you know, I have, I have for example, I have a lot of physical pain. And now I know why I have a manganese poisoning in the brain which i found out so I, i'm really working on that i'm going to detox it but now i know like okay that's why my physical body is in a lot of pain so sometimes i can't access the bliss either because of the you know the nervous my nervous system is all the time in stress it's all the time creating stress so i'm like oh so sometimes that's why i can relate you know if people are like yeah you can talk about you know it's like these these instagram channels where you have the perfect girl with the perfect pose and the perfect this and she's like i am safe and i'm like yeah looks like you're safe you <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> like you, like. your life looks, and i'm not saying like <laughs> but that's i'm sure that that's how people are looking at us as well they are like yeah you can speak about bliss and you can speak about this and that but i'm at a at the point in life where i i'm i'm ready to kill myself so how can i get into bliss because i'm in so much pain and so much confusion and so much despair and so much this and that so i just want to like just tap into like just give the if you just did the light goddess i'll just be the light uh, the dark goddess at the moment it's <laughs> just like you know let's, let's offer methods for both uh sides on the you know the scale where we all need to navigate ourselves into it's like if if you can't do any of that just kind of repeat uh this that's this practice saying this is a dream and in the beginning you'll it's, it feels a little forced because in the beginning you're like this doesn't feel like a dream at all because you're in the middle of something, your body's maybe going through pain. And when you're going through pain or a painful situation or a challenging conversation or a challenging, you're stuck in traffic or I don't know, financial pressure, whatever, you know, all these things that most people, you know, at some point in their life have to deal with. How do you deal with it when you're that when you're when you're in that situation? Then then this can actually help if you make it a practice, because a lot of people will be like, I tried it, it doesn't work. And it's like, uh, well, this you need to actually do it every like 10 times an hour. This is not something that you just say three times a day. This is a dream. And then that's exactly. a dream. You're right. Like it, any of these practices do need some sort of, uh, you know, uh, commitment. I don't like the word so much because, you know, you could say maybe some enthusiasm or some motivation or whatever works for you, whatever energy works for you. But you have to repeat it constantly it's like constantly you have to get yourself like oh this is a dream oh this is not real oh this is a dream if it's a dream so then after a few days of that that's what i'm doing now i think i'm now like two 
So since two weeks, I'm con continuously saying this is a dream. So I was at the dentist. He was like, oh my God, <laughs> I didn't know my teeth were broken. And he was like, for an hour, it was like really like as if he was welding, uh, you know, a <laughs> sword. And I was like, this is my jaw. This is my tongue. And this is my tooth. Like, please don't weld it like a sword. But anyway, it happened anyway. So I was like saying, I was chanting a mantra and I was saying, this is a dream. This is a dream. All for the mantra. So one part of the brain was like a mantra. And at the other part that was still left a little bit of like, oh my God, this is hurt and it's painful, this is a dentist and this and that. This part said, this is a dream, this is a dream. Like seriously, in that hour, it got welded <laughs> to my physical body. <laughs> this is a dream. So I'm not saying like, oh, you know, you have to be in difficult situations to say this is a dream. You can do it anytime when it's pleasant, when it's, this is the practice actually. When it's pleasant, we go into grabbing an attachment. So you need to detach. This is a dream. This past. This will pass. And if it's painful situation, you do the same. Instead of grabbing to the pain, saying this is me and I'm having it. I'm in pain. You can say this is a dream. This will pass. It's okay. So it really helps. Like I'm just. I don't know. I dropped it in because you talked about Tens and Wong and all these beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's this. beautiful. Beautiful. And and the you know the added part of it we practice is that you know if I look at my dreams last night I woke up in a dream and so you can relate this to a dream right I woke up in a dream and I know that when I'm awake in a dream I can transform the dream that's part of the practice of dream yoga and yeah. so I was I'm I, I'm fortunate to be able to go into my own dreams and you can try this you can say this is a dream this is a dream sometimes it helps you might do a friend of mine, neuroscientist, Kiefer O'Sullivan, had this uh, little tip where he's he he says this is a dream and pulls his skin like this to have some kind of a felt. So, like you said, right. doing this often every day, and he pulls it. So, what he did was when he woke up inside his dream, he found himself pulling this, but instead of doing it, it stretched, you know, and he thought, <laughs> "Oh, this is a dream." <laughs> yeah. Lucid, I'm oh, lucid. I'm yeah. lucid. <laughs> And and that's you know that's the whole point also of yeah. when you're doing that this is a dream practice in your waking life, it's to help you realize like you just exactly as you said so beautifully that this all pass, even the even the dentist with its pain this will pass like you don't grab onto it as being the only reality because we know that all of these shifts and change even even something that seems really really difficult for you right this moment yeah. that it too will pass and it too will pass so that that what you just said this is a dream this too will pass it, it's kind of beautiful to put even to put those two together i found a lot of the dream workshops i i was doing like you Ira, that people often made up their own little subtle versions of it you know they'd say oh this is a dream this too will pass they'd they'd touch exactly into the heart of what what you said and make it their own and then they go oh right when i'm at the this is a dream this too will pass they, as you said they made it into a mantra and and finally that was exactly what i was talking to my uh, daughter and wife about because they have you know like every uh, mother and daughter they have their own you know pretty pretty strong sparring moments where they where they're really just telling each other what they think of each other and I said what about at those moments when you feel that you know that tough tough energy arise that you you're really kind of you're cemented into because you've been reacting the same way to people for the you know potentially the whole of your life what if just for that moment just before you jump dive in and call that person a, a whatever if you say a mantra so you just start to practice every hour and you can actually do this in a simple way just what Hira was saying about this is a dream you can actually take a potential potentially difficult moment let's say you know you're going to visit your, your relatives and you know you don't get on well with one particular relative and you know every time you see them that you're going to just dive into the same old arduous kind of talk or you know criticism or judgment so maybe what you do before you actually do that you actually practice each day feeling into the compassionate nature of that situation and and just feeling it arise seeing that that person you know maybe you don't even like them but you just be open to the opportunity 
that that relationship might change just a tiny bit. It doesn't have to be a big step, just a little. And then what might happen, You might every time that person sees you, maybe they say something, maybe they just know how to hook into you and really pull out. <laughs> so, so maybe just for once in the whole time, you just don't bite. You just say, you just prime yourself with something like, like this is a dream. You prime yourself with, so good to see you. And then you just leave it at that. No matter what, you just rest in that. It's a bit like saying this is a dream, but in a kind of a practical relationship way where you where you kind of break that that circuit. Because there's kind of, just as you were saying, Hira, there's kind of a thing that happens in our nervous system. A nervous system is actually, has like, a, what is it, 192 nerve endings. And it's like uh, every one of those nerve endings is a, is a portal to the unified field, to the unity or the union, no, right? That's what Tantra is, the union of the whole. So every time your nervous system gets triggered, it's actually a message saying to you, hey, this is actually a portal to the infinite. You can actually just, you know, like circuits where you break a circuit, you, you've been running the same old nervous system response over and over and over and over and over and over again until your brain actually has, has put all those neurons together and created a, you know, a little path, which, which says, okay, every time you get with this person, you're going to react in this way and you can't help it because <laughs> you get triggered. But what if you just practice what, what the practice does beforehand, just by seeing the situation going, okay, I might not like the person, but I can just be open to a change in the relationship. So you just see yourself both meeting, just smiling. That's it. You're doing something really simple. We're just offering them the opportunity to, to just be who they are. And then what happens is your nervous system and your brain starts to generate a different response before you get together with the person. And then, you, it, and then it's like, this is a dream. Exactly that. You start to realize, oh, well, of course it's a dream because I've actually just been acting out of a habitual response to that relationship for such a long time. And I'm going to, and I'm going to change it. You, you, it can only really be you at this point. And then maybe it gives you the opportunity at some time. So you don't, you don't bite. You just say, hey, it's nice to see you. Yeah, no, and they keep trying to egg you out. You just go, no, it's good to see you. That's it. That's all I really wanted to say. I'm just in that space. <laughs> and, and maybe it gives you the opportunity to find an opening with that, but exactly like you've been practicing. So you don't try to change them. And you're actually not even changing yourself. You're just saying, hey, I'm just going to, I'm going to rest in an opening. I'm just going to, allow something to happen that's never happened before and that is just to see what see what's there so it's like this is a dream because in fact the dream is you're you're creating it all the time you're creating all the stories you're creating every every single thing that's happening you're actually generating that again and again and again and, again. and just as i was saying when you when what what the, this is a dream also does it actually triggers you out of your habitual response so if you go into a relationship with somebody, you're so used to something, to having this trigger. and have, if, if you're saying to yourself, this is a dream, I can be open to whatever's here. And you just simply don't bite. You keep your mouth shut <laughs> and just listen. Just go, okay, good to see you. Thanks. <laughs> That's it, right? And you walk away if, if you need to. Sometimes you do have to do that. Sometimes somebody's not going to leave you alone. I've been lots of those... I had a, a classic case at one of my um, uh, communities that I used to run, Hara, where there was a particular person who really loved to have a, a go at me every time I got there. And so I actually had to do, I had to do some, I had to do exactly that. I had to walk in one time and, and I knew it wasn't going to stop. So I said, hey, it's so good to see you, but I got to go. Bye. And then, <laughs> and this person rang me up and said, what's, what's up with you? Where, why were you, you know? I said, oh, it's okay. I just don't want to, I just don't want to go down that same old road anymore. <laughs> they said, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> I said, no, no, that's it. I said, I'm I'm okay. If you want to chat about it sometime, that's fine. But otherwise, I, I don't need it anymore. See, no, there's all, also that, those relationships. You 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 start to see when you actually break a circuit and you say, This is a dream, and the, this is a dream actually puts a diff, it's like a mantra. It's actually creating a different space whatever's going to happen quite naturally and then you say so internally 
you allow the space to happen. And then, of course, if the relationship is going to continue, then the person's going to come with you and say, hey, I, want to, I actually want to explore this relationship with you. I want it to be fun. I want it to be playful. I want it to be happy. Or, or they might not. And, and that's okay too. Both things. Both things. Yeah. But you... yeah this is, and this is, this is one of those things that, uh, that are very interesting. And, and then I want to go back to the dark and white feminine because we are, you know, we're, like usual. We're, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, we've, we've wherever the few. flow is leading us, we're just <laughs> going with it. <laughs> we, we covered a few That's countries. About our <laughs> relationship. <laughs> because we're just like you, you know. But um, I just want to bring it back to the light and dark and then kind of maybe we can even finish with looking at that a Sounds little bit good. better. Yeah, okay. Um, but I just wanted to say that uh, one of those lessons, yes, about this is a dream and about relationships is that um, what I've noticed, and, and especially, of course, with my husband, but also with other people that are close to me, is that as soon as I say this is a dream and I change it, that creates space for the other to also change. Because what we do in the, the old paradigm, let's say, is like we're waiting for the other one to or change or we want the other one to change then we can change but that is exactly where it's blocked like we need to change ourselves into what we desire from our partner or our relationship whether it's a colleague or whether it's on in the work or the you know whatever the relationship is is that when we change it deeply in the inside of ourselves and we see that person differently exactly what you're saying and we see that person differently then the magic happens because the other person is like, oh, you know, can start to breathe as well because the other person is like, yes. oh, nice, all this pattern is gone. Okay, great. Like, because the other one also wants to change, also wants to, exactly as you say, playfully discover what's more in a relationship. Because even when you're uh, fighting or when you're in a conflict, there's still a relationship going on because else you wouldn't be fighting. You would just be like, bye, and you wouldn't even deal with that person. So the fact that there is maybe some fighting or, or conflict or whatever means, doesn't mean like I'm not one of that person that says, oh, uh, you're bothered or irritated by that person because you have those traits. I don't believe that anymore because sometimes people will project things on me and it will actually just bother me. It doesn't mean that I have those things that the person is projecting on me. It's just bothering me because this person is projecting. <laughs> So it's that simple. So I'm not, I'm not, totally, even in that, totally. right? I'm not even in that anymore. Like, oh, uh, you know, I'm going to search in myself what it is that irritates me in this person because I probably have some of it. Oh, forget about it. Like, it's, it's fine. Like, I'll just stay in a high vibration and just, you know, wait for that person. But then I also project things on other people and I'm noticing it in, in my, that uh, my closest ones, my daughter, my husband, my close teachers. The things that I'm projecting, I'm like, wow, wait, that's not the frequency I want to be in. That's not what I want to transmit to this person. This, this is a projection, it's a negative projection. So then when I change it, then you instantly, depending on the level, of course, of the, of the person, if it's a teenage daughter, then maybe not instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I never instantly, no. <laughs> I can wait. I can wait a little bit longer for that. But you know, when you when you look at it as matured, uh, wise people around you, then you're like, okay, it's instantly changed because I changed. This relationship completely changed, and the person can start to breathe and play with it again as well. So that's really nice. Love that. Beautiful. It's yeah. So I just want to bring it back to our light dark, and I was thinking, why not? uh do a little bit of a kind of a meditative i don't want to create a whole meditation here but just kind of why don't we meditatively uh look at the light and uh dark goddess traits like the healing traits and the dark uh traits i don't know what do you feel like you feel like beautiful you beautiful nice? i feel that's perfect way to finish so okay yeah, yeah. Okay, so I want to credit the, the, where I got this information from. It's from the book, which is called, let me see. Um, it's something with the womb. Do you mind if I just take a ah, second? Is it the womb, the womb awakening? Yeah, that's that the it? one. Oh, do you okay. know it? Yeah, 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 I do. The womb can you awakening. tell me the writer so that I can? I uh, think it's... At, Ezra Bertrand and is that it? Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's a couple. Yeah. Perfect. And so yeah, whoever the other part of the couple is, I think it's 
Ezra ah, and uh, yeah. Any, anyway, if you have this name, Ezra Bertrand, and yep. the book name, Womb yep. Awakening, then you have, then, yep. then they you'll be able to find it. Yeah, yep. perfect. Oh, you like that book as well? I like love it. <laughs> that, is, that has been one of my beautiful go-to books for a long, long time. Yeah, oh, so I just, I just adore it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, me it's too. Uh, Siren, Siren Bertrand is the other. Siren, yeah. Yeah, Ezra and Siren. I, I just adore it. It's... Do you know them personally, or? Uh, no, no. But I, I can't even remember how I came across the book. But yeah, I've, I've read it back to front. You know, maybe half a dozen times. So, well, you know, you... <laughs> a lot of yeah, a lot of the references I was giving with the uh, light and the darker from their work as well. I love them. It's beautiful. Amazing. I'm I'm so you know I'm, I've stopped being surprised with you out there, but uh, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> perfect synchronicity. Dream yoga and womb awakening. Always. <laughs> exactly. Just no wonder. I can dive with you in uh, like a hundred thousand different fields and you will be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, <laughs> no, was just okay, that was hilarious timing. That was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of all the books to mention. Yeah. yeah love that. Perfect. Okay. So the credit is done. So why don't we, you know, kind of, uh, I think we can just simply go a little bit inwards. Maybe you yeah. can bring us more like kind of inwards, kind of resting okay. there, and then a simple. And then yeah, I'll, I'll do a, a simple minute. one, and you do the couple, couple just, of minutes. I'll just mention them, and then we'll just let's say like uh, if people are interested uh, to do this, like get get yourself a little bit comfortable, like if you're driving or whatever, just stop the car and everything. You know how it is, and then um let's let's recognize this is what my teacher always says just recognize and rest so we don't need to uh, for example when i go to the shadow aspects of the feminine and i say uh, self-sacrifice or you know all these things unspoken expectations or st stuff like that then it's not like a, a criticism so i don't want people to go into this and be like oh my yeah. god oh my god oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i got all of them <laughs> That's like, oh, oh no. and switch us off you don't need to of course it's good you know if you want to recognize that you have all these patterns it's okay but don't do it in a negative way and at least yeah. laugh about it you know exactly. or, or just exactly. recognize you don't need to laugh or cry about it just recognize and rest in that recognition yeah. That's correct what would say yeah Rest, just it's the same so. that's basically what i'm going to do in the beginning all right i'll do yeah. i'll do a two minute intro and if you do the the light and the dark that sounds perfect whatever, yes. whatever way you decide to do it. Okay. all righty so if you if you're driving pull over <laughs> and if yeah. you're just hanging about at home you can sit you could lie down but maybe sitting in chairs easier because then you'll be real present when hara guides you through her part of it so just begin by checking your posture and just Keep the spine straight and relax all the muscles in your body. And take your awareness to the breathing for a moment. Just notice where you're aware. So are you aware more of the breath in the nose or the chest or the belly or the womb? Where, where are you more present? And just go with that deep breath for a couple of calming breaths. Breathing in, noting the inhalation all the way to the gap or the space. And then all the way on the exhalation, again to the gap or the space. So you're just noticing the quality of the breathing. You don't have to make yourself calm. You're just noticing the sensations in the breath. And then equally, just notice any sensations that are present in your body. So just noticing whatever you experience, whether it's pleasant or painful or, or neutral, just allow it to be just as it is. You don't need to change anything. You don't need to control anything. Just like the breath, simply allow the body to be just as it is. And just consider that we're going to do this practice not just for ourselves, but as we spoke about for our partners and friends and children and those in our community, for all beings, so that they too can recognize their own true nature. So you can say this in whatever way you want it. You want to maybe your own compassionate motivation. 
just make it into your own words that you're going to dedicate this perhaps for somebody you love somebody that needs this maybe somebody you've been having some difficulty with and then just rest just as Ira said just rest and open awareness just simply rest and relax in this open awareness for a few moments and then I'm going to hand over to Ira beautiful so just kind of feel see sense or connect to that stillness that you're in it's very deep stillness and what really helps me sometimes is to kind of just describe the sounds that you're hearing so maybe you're hearing your breath maybe you're hearing my voice, maybe you're hearing neighbors, people in the house, even maybe fridge or an air conditioning or electric uh, machinery or whatever you hear, just describe it so that it becomes part of the meditation and that you will feel that by describing the sounds, you are becoming more and more safe in your body, you're becoming more and more safe in your surrounding. And you're becoming more and more safe in this meditation. And what happens when you do that is that you will start to feel that there is a silence. Not a silence of a stopping of the sounds or anything like that, but a silence that is carrying the sounds. So it's a field of silence that you're feeling within and around you that including the sounds there is silence within those sounds the silence is the source of those sounds so you're resting all the time deeper and deeper in that stillness and that silence and in that spaciousness feeling everything as space, so your body, every cell of your body, all your thoughts and feelings, the inner and outer world, everything is just pure space. And now that we are feeling, seeing, sensing, connecting our awareness to that space, you can feel it in your heart or your whole body, maybe space. So you're feeling, connecting to that true nature that you are, that space. And when we connect to that space, knowing that we are that space, that this is our true nature, then we can do these types of meditations much more easy because then we recognize that whatever is going to come up, I'm going to mention some qualities and some shadow aspects of the white and the dark feminine so live through it or recognize these patterns not as you like you are like this or you are like that you are that space in which these qualities and shadows are going to come up and disappear like clouds in the sky so let's start with the white feminine and we'll start with the gifts of the white feminine. And again, just recognize no criticism, no analyzing, not even trying to change anything or become anything. You're just that space in which all these feelings and thoughts are going to come up. You're just going to recognize and rest in this space. So the gifts of the white feminine are love, Tenderness, softness, vulnerability, surrender,
compassion, intuition, empathy, simplicity, humility, devotion, inclusiveness, maternal or paternal instincts, loyalty, supportive, honest, emotional, earthly wisdom, good listener, celebrating others, cooperative, and integrity. So kind of just feel all those qualities inside of yourself, these, all these gifts. What an amazing being. You can also feel where you can embody them more. Now that you're feeling them and be even aware of these, you, can, you are actually helping yourself to embody them more. Okay, so now let's go to the shadow aspects. Just recognize them. And next time it comes up, you're more able to be aware of it, so you're more able to change it. But we're not using it to punish ourselves. So some of the shadows are afraid to speak out, afraid to shine, self-sabotaging, low self-confidence, passive-aggressive, self-sacrifice, unspoken expectations, Disconnected from the body, shy, self-conscious, difficulty with orgasm, afraid of pleasure, and people please it. So again, like just kind of feel, see, sense, maybe not all of them are related to you and how you are, but you can recognize these patterns inside of you, feeling, seeing, sensing that we can heal from the shadow aspects once we start to recognize them and become aware of them. So let's go into the dark. Just for now, just that white feminine, if you have anything left there, so you can download that, whatever you need. Maybe a message, maybe a, a beautiful symbol that you can work with. Like, oh, this is my white feminine. Oh, and this is my dark feminine. So you can feel, see, sense, imagine a symbol that you can work with that symbolizes for you the white feminine. So now the dark feminine. So the gifts of the dark feminine are wild, sensual, erotic, free, pleasure, shining, confidence, beauty, celebration, sexual openness, fearlessness, so there's no fear, self-worth, power, ecstasy, magnetism, passion, uh, when you work with sacred smells and oils and ornaments. Uh, luxurating in the body or the body. Uh, stepping out, being seen, and orgasmic living. 
So again, like maybe this opened some awareness or triggered something in you, then allow this to just be because you're just recognizing and experiencing this from the space that you are. And now let's do the shadows. Vanity, manipulation, seduction, jealousy, envy, sabotage, superiority, judgment, attention seeking, shallow, obsession with youth and beauty, controlling, cruel, denied low self-worth, need for validation and approval, sexual domination or sexual manipulation and competitive. So again, like feel, see sense, be aware, make kind of a commitment to yourself that you're going to be more aware of these shadow aspects when they're coming out of your uh, daily life personality. And again, you can ask for a symbol for the dark feminine or a kind of a method. And then there will be more unification in between this white and dark feminine within you. just for a moment, just kind of feel that willingness to work with these different energies within you and to unify these two um, for yourself and for the others, and that you heal that split, which has been going on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So thank you, thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you, hi, hi. Thank you. That was wonderful. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a little hard to do all of that and just a very, you know, and it's kind of, you can feel that I'm kind of seeing a, a list, you know, and like I'm going through a list. You're like, uh, for example, I don't know, at manipulation, you know, I, I, when we were there, I was like, yeah, me, yeah, me, you know, but in a, in a good way, like not just like, oh, me, and then punish myself. It's like, yeah, I do that. So even only the manipulation, we could take like seriously hours of meditation just for that one and seeing it and recognizing agree. it. They are deep. They're deep, yeah, they're deep, deep quality, deep aspects of ourself in all yeah. ways. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. Now, I just as, as we're finishing, because I no noticed we're on that last, last leg, I, I just wanted to bring everybody back to your This is a Dream and that take a few moments, you know, uh, throughout your day, select a situation where you know is pretty familiar that you're going to either be part of your daily routine where you're going to be with somebody maybe where you want to bring this to mind or sometime just set up in advance a few times during your day even put them in your phone as an alarm just to trigger that you're going to yeah exactly that you're going to connect and say this is a dream it too will pass or this is a dream i'm here as a pure being, right? Something that, and the pure being relate means you embrace all of that light and all of the dark. You allow all of that to be present. You will embrace all of that. So just bring that several times during your day, as often as you can. This is a dream. This too will pass. Such a beautiful pointing that you gave, Hira. So I just wanted to remind everybody that if you can bring this to mind during your day, where you actually make this part of your daily routine, where you're simply connecting with this awareness by bringing to mind that this is a dream and this too will pass, then the practice really is just to recognize that. You don't need to analyze it. There's just the knowing. All you're doing is simply connecting with an awareness, just as Zyra and I were saying. You're connecting with a luminous awareness. And knowing that that's what this does. This is a dream, this too will pass. The moment that you know that, then you're connecting with knowing. You're aware. Instead of falling into habit, you're aware. It's as simple as that. 
Hira's given you an incredibly simple, beautiful pointing just to bring us back to the ground of knowing, the knowing from which all experiences spring. So that's what it does. This is a dream. This too will pass. You're resting in the knowing. So thank you, Hara. It's been brilliant. Yeah, and I'm going to, uh, on uh, my YouTube, I'm going to put a link. I always do on, on all my YouTubes to put a link to the workshops of Tenzin Wangel Rinpoche, where you can actually go to the master and learn it from the source. So, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And remember, everybody, you are all sourceless carriers. Yeah. So we, we really honor that in you.